can't please everyone, but we'll see. All right, so we have game number five here on Daybreak LE. Playing for Team Extraterrestrials, they're currently up 3-1. He's on a two-game streak. It's XT's Bright on the south side of the map for Daybreak. And playing for Team X Gamers, it's X Gamers, X Gamers, Dark. Uh, of course, he probably had that tag from before when he, there wasn't clan tags and he just hasn't changed it, so that would be what's going on there. Let's see if anybody does anything crazy, though. Daybreak, such an old map. So many maps uh, and games played at tournaments on it. So, you know, so many times it's used as a map in a tournament. That's what I was trying to say. And then just so many games played on it for everybody because it's been in the pool for so long. It's like Zelnaga Caverns back in the day or Metalopolis, just around forever. So everybody knew and had good strats for it. All right, so... Bright's scouting over here, trying to see what's going on. He should get over here before any type of tech, you know, it, and by tech I mean if a pool goes down versus a hatchery. So by simply being over here, he makes the Zerg have to respond with a pool. Oh, unless he sneaks out. Oh, go little, go little drone. You can do it, buddy. No, you can't. You're not going to be close enough. It was a good try, though. And Dark is not going to be able to plant his expansion here. That drone's really, really trying, though. Let's knock the shields off. Ooh, his micro. Impeccable. Ooh. All right, he drives him away. So now he should be able to back up, but he doesn't have enough because he dropped his pool. But probably back, back down. Yeah, there he goes. He's going to drop back down. He should be able to get the expansion up now. The probe is not going to be able to get up in time to block it. In the meantime, though, it looks like he's going to forge fast expand probably again. He did that last time. Forge started up. So now Dark needs to be really conscious of this, that he sees the forge out on the map. He's going to have to either build a few lings or is Yeah, okay, he's going to build four lings. I was going to say, you either have to build, like, two to four lings or you have to move your next overlord, which is coming out right down over here, to make sure that there aren't cannons going up. Preferably sending a drone over there first, but... We'll see. Should be totally fine. Doesn't look like any type of cannon rush is going to be actually be going down. Wings out on the field. They should be able to get across the map and deal damage really um, before this photon cannon comes up. He may be able to run by. Like that's a possibility. You can you can run by in this situation. I don't think you can kill the cannon before it finishes and then blast all of your wings by. But he could just like run through here, run through like this, and maybe get in. I'm not sure, but he definitely needs to get there. A heart going down. Alright, so is this going to be a wall in? Drops a pylon. He actually manages to get in. One ling dying. But there are a few lings in the back of this line now. Alright, Cybernetic score going up. His wall that he's been building multiple times. And it is just going to be a cannon rush over here on the third base by Bright. He's trying to delay that if he can. More lings being started. That's interesting. Okay. I wonder if they're to scout near his third to prevent cannoning. We'll have to see. What are they going to do? Yep, yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do. And they are going to get down there in time. And meanwhile, a zealot has moved over. Killed one of the remaining three zerglings. And, oh, almost killing another. Now, I don't think that they can actually run by and get in the main base. I mean, if both of them go, one of them could get in. But we'll have to see. Cancel went down. I think that probe died. Yeah, that probe on that side of the map died. So now it's just ring around the rosy with these lings over here. Oh, one of the lings is getting all sliced up. And then the other one getting blasted by a magical pulse. So... Every time I see the photon cannon shots, I mean, besides obviously thinking of StarCraft 1, think of Alien vs. Predator. Did anyone play that game? With like the pulse gun spam when you were a predator. So OP. So good. Then they nerfed it a little bit. But it was, there, it was really, really good. That was a really fun uh, uh, first person shooter. But uh, anyway, degrading here. Looks like Bright's in a pretty solid position. It's starting to look a lot like a Wings of Liberty game, though. 
as far as what's gone down so far. There isn't a Mothership core out. There isn't really anything to indicate that this isn't Wings of Liberty um, as far as Zerg and Protoss tactics on this map. And I mean, that makes sense. They're defaulting to what they're really comfortable with. And on this map, they probably played it a million times in Wings and probably a lot less so in Heart of the Swarm. It was only around for, was it a season? No, it was in for two seasons, I guess. But uh, it did phase out in this last season. I guess it was only in for a season. But uh, I was getting rather tired of this map. But it's fun to see it casted sometimes. And we have the third actually started up for Bright. That's pretty ambitious. Um, especially if it's going to be a big roach attack. Which it was kind of looking like it wanted to be, but no lair was started. So, I mean, there's not really a possibility there without speed. So it is going to be pretty macro heavy. Bright has, you know, really set up positions for defending here on this map. Instead of going for, like, the big wall in, he's just going for, like, the smaller one with two cannons behind it fully protected. So I kind of like that. kind of like that position. Plus one, almost done. Again, that's going to be really powerful versus Lynx. Fourth base starting up here for Dark, though. And the lair is finally cranking along. Should be putting drones into those gases, I would think. Depends on what he wants to go for, though. He's getting double Evo Chamber. When this layer finishes, we'll have to see if he's going to go into Muta. Because he has a ton of gas banked, so it might be that. Or is he just going to go into like a really big roach attack and go try and stomp down that third? I feel like it'd probably be a little bit too late for that. Plus, the, the double Evo Chamber is what's throwing me off here. It feels like he wants to be more defensive uh, with that double Evo. Yeah, it's going to be a ranged composition, but be more defensive, not an offensive one. In the meantime, uh, an Immortal started over here on this side of the map. Just, you know, a good, strong defensive unit to have. I'm still confused as to why there's no Mothership Core, though. It strikes me as very odd. He's used them in his last games, so, I mean, it just seems weird. Both players just playing pretty high Econ right now. Infestation Pit started. So it's probably going to be Swarm Host now. And it definitely explains the passivi passivity. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Playing really, really passive. Alright, here are the first set of roaches. Um, I feel like they're going to be out on the map just to deny what's going on as far as any type of aggression. You know, you don't want to just swell like, wait and try and swell like 30 roaches at once. They're going to move around, they're going to try and pick off proxy pylons. Okay, dark headed right up there to that position. They spot that, oh yeah, he sees it with an overlord, that's why. All right, Roach is moving down. All right, so this is interesting. He has, this is a play that some players are using towards the ends of Wings of Liberty as Protoss. Um, it's just kind of like a cutesy play to try and pick off some drones and get some damage. So we'll have to see. Force field going down. He's gonna be able to hold this ramp for quite a long time. He doesn't really want to engage here though. It's really not what you want to be doing. All right, lots of Queens moving up. Force fields continue to go down. Roach is now out in the main, though. So oh, getting picked off. That means no retreat for all of these centuries. And that's quite a few centuries. So, and it's a really heavy gas investment. He's not reblocking the ramp either. He's not close enough. Move down. Okay, yeah, there he goes. Able to reblock that. There are enough roaches out now, but they're going to be able to finish cleaning this up. It hallucinated. Uh, <laughs> Archon, seeing if it could break down that ramp. I'm not really sure what he was trying to do with that. Uh, but now Dark looks like he's in a pretty solid position. That was a pretty big investment. It's like a Trixie play that really didn't do enough damage. I mean, it killed some workers, but really not enough to make that big of a difference, I would say. So we'll have to see. Yeah, 12 workers killed, and he's still ahead on worker count. So, I mean, that really didn't deal that much. He has a Greater Spire mutating down here in the south that hasn't been, I don't think, detected at all. Yeah, it hasn't been. 
Um, but his tech is really quite all over the place, uh, Dark that is. Uh, mostly because he was upgrading range and now he's going into, you know, in all probability, uh, we have Broodlords coming in. Alright, some good scouting. Is this Phoenix actually going to get over here? Is it going to see it? No, it does not quite see that Greater Spire. So he still doesn't know what's going on. He saw plus one, plus one on the roaches, so he's going to assume that's kind of a ground army. But now it's a bunch of Corruptors heading out on the field. Ooh, and he finished that wall up there. That has a lot of gateways. Okay. And a lot of cans, actually. It's a really solid defensive position. Alright, some good defensive structures being set up. Some nice spore crawlers and spine crawlers. Well, spore crawler and spine crawlers. Doesn't have any in his natural though, but he has three queens at like every base. That is so much defense. Wow. That's a lot invested into queens. And I mean, of course they're there to move forward with the army and transfuse brood lords. That's why there are really that many queens. But that's like really odd to see that many queens, except for in a situation where a Zerg player is going for some type of timing with either brood lords or ultras. You know, units with a lot of HP that are, you know, relatively slowish that the queens can just follow behind and heal up a lot. I feel like there is a little bit of an issue here with the creep spread, though. It's not quite as far across the map as he would like it. And it's uh, a lot of stalkers, but not enough to deal with as many broodlords as there are going to be. Oh man, that is a lot of broodlords. There's as many broodlords pretty much as there are stalkers. <laughs> so that's... Uh, that's interesting. It'll just be how fast he can identify and move into Tempest or something. I mean, he has no Stargate tech that I saw out on the field at all. Yeah, he's he's in double Immortal production. I'm sorry, double Colossus production right now. So it's going to be a really difficult position for him to hold on. If Dark plays his cards right, he should be able to siege out this, this new upcoming fourth base pretty easily. And since he's taking a fifth behind it, he should be in a really good position to just continuously lean on to the Protoss player. And here come the ever-frightening pink broodlords in their armada. Our broodlords laying down some herd on this base. And it looks like a big, big warp-in of zealots up here at the main. Definitely what you want to do. Abuse how slow broodlords are. They cannot be anywhere but where they are on the map. And that may sound stupid, but they're just never going to get back to that base. They're never going back home. They are over here. They're committed. He's going to knock down these rocks to prevent lots of force fields from preventing him from getting through. And it looks like the entire army is going to move around and Blight, or Bright's just going to go for a base race. Alright, two good spines, three, four good spines up in the back over here actually. That's a really solid position for trying to take down the Zealots. But there is this entire army out here in the middle that he's going to have to deal with. Alright, the Broodlords decided, okay, well I sieged out that, that, third, that fourth base going up, so I guess I'll come back home. There's a lot of sentries. They're all at full energy. Not really sure that's going to help too much. Help a lot more versus locusts, to be honest. Oh, there's no observer with this. And all of those roaches are going to be able to burrow up right underneath the Colossus. Lots of hallucinated units right now. So it's, is he going to focus the right units? Colossus going down. Then reburrow. Queen's moving up. Oh, man. Caught between a rock and a hard place. It's going to be pretty difficult for Bright to hold on to this. He did manage to take out the third, but the fourth is running. The drones at the third, I don't really think, got picked off. There are a lot of zealots. They just picked off the workers up there. Sorry, it's a little shaky. That was kind of weird. But we'll have to see. Retreating away from these broodlords. Four stargates in production right now. He's decided to go whole hog, probably on void rays. But maybe in the Tempest. We'll have to see if he, if he drops it right away. The main did get picked off. A lot of tech there has fallen. And by a lot of tech, I mean no tech, actually, now that I think about it. Because he's built, he spread out so much. His infestation pit is here. The spire was over here. It did get picked off down there at the third, but not up at the main. Trying to take a six base, bold faced, in front of an entire army. That did not work out so well. And now lots of defensive structures being placed at the fifth. The Broodlord's just so slow there. Not able to get down into position. This fifth looks like it might be taken out pretty easily, actually. No cancels on all these. This is a lot of minerals just going to waste. That was 600 minerals worth of, 500 minerals worth of defensive structures for nothing. So that's a pretty big trade, actually. 
It's not something you want to get away. No transfusers going down at all of these screens. Okay, there they go. Finally transfusing. Now, those two Colossus getting ripped apart. And now the Overlords are probably going to want to pressure back across the map. But again, this War Prism didn't get dealt with. And these Roaches are going to have to come back and deal with these three ones outs that just deal so much damage. They're going to try and focus down the Infestation Pit and then move on to the new Hive. More Spine Crawlers going down. Third base has been reestablished. The main most of the way done. No, it's about halfway. But uh, these Broodlords just need to kind of move forward and place more pressure back towards keep him on the back foot. It was actually a really good blink. He waited till the Broodlings were out midair and then moved across. And I feel like it's getting to the point where the Roaches can actually just take all these Stalkers. So, yep, boom, pops up right underneath them. Good blink away, though. Look at those Broodlings. They're like, wait, where are we going? Okay, I guess we're going back home. Couldn't reach him because of the blink. That's actually really funny to watch. Alright, blinking back up. The fourth was established up here for Bright, though. He's pumping out four Void Rays at a time. He's up to, it looks like, eight down here. Yeah, so he's going to have 12 Void Rays. That's going to rip these Broodlords apart so bad. Um, he gave him way too much time to be able to transition to that. And now Ultras are going to be trying to come down behind this. But there aren't any... Okay, there's a few Corruptors. But Corruptors can't really deal with it. Where are the Queens? There they are. Big old Queen Army. That's what you want. Alright, Broodlord's trying to get the damage down over here. Not quite able to, but Roach is flanking. Alright, I think these are finally going to die. It's been a really long time, but I think the Stalkers finally have had their number called. And down they go. The giant armada of Queens. Look at all those. Da -da -da, marching across the field. This fourth base is going to fall pretty easily. Where are those Corruptors? Where did he send the Corruptors? Okay, they're there. Still out on the field. I wonder if they randomly got picked up by the Void Rays, but they did not. So marching forward. Dark is on quite a few bases right now. His... He didn't actually manage to reestablish his base down here in the south, though. Zealot's moving out across the map. Sieging away with these Broodlords. The weird thing is there's actually no upgrades on the Broodlords at all. Ultralisk Cavern pumping away, trying to get that plus armor started. Where are all the Void Rays? There they are. That's a lot of Void Rays. It's uh, 16, 17, 18, 19. Almost 20 Void Rays are out on the field right now. And they may be able to rip through this army, but I mean, that's all the army is going to have. It's not going to really be able to remax. And the Zerg player, meanwhile, has just so many resources banked and has entire map control. Big Zealot run by, actually got picked off by all those roaches. So, yeah, I mean, this is a position that's going to be pretty much impossible for Bright to come back from. This army has to not only win, but then it has to go kill the entire opponent's base. Uh, Corruptors need to not get out ahead, though. They need to stick with these queens. The queens need to be able to transfuse. Transfuse is going down a little bit, but the Void Ray is overcharging and just ripping through everything. Wow. Okay, now it needs to be a massive Corruptor build because all this is going to melt instantly to these void rays oh my gosh that was just devastation now he doesn't have any actual remaxing capability as we talked about so it's literally just those void rays that's his entire army but that is so many void rays <laughs> that's 18 void rays that's a lot i don't think i think one of them died maybe two during that engagement it's now 12 mute is being built it seems like that was Okay, he doesn't have this hatchery. Okay, now 16. I was going to say, he didn't have a hatchery or two selected. Because he should have been able to build more than that. Wow, lots of High Templars being morphed in in the main base over here. That's kind of interesting. Those Mutas should probably go pick those off before they finish building. Alright, the Archons actually did finish. So now that's a position. Wow, here come the Void Rays to work on the back of these Mutas. And, wow, Bright just, I mean... He had to not only win that engagement, but come across the map with no resources to take this game, and he might just be able to do it. But to see, the hive does melt. Quite a few mutas scooting across. They don't quite get picked off. They're at 1 1, so all the air is at 1 1 right now out on the field. Lots and lots and lots of spore crawlers out on the map right now. Roaches taking down everything. So it is, again, just this army. That's all they have. Overcharge going down. 
This Void Ray is just dealing tons of damage right now. Melting through everything on the field. Look how fast they just melt through those Spore Crawlers without any Queens to transfuse or anything like that. More Mutas trying to be built. And that's going to be the last of the Mutas as the Spire is dropping. It is still only two more Void Rays have died. Oh man, this is brutal. Alright, so now the Void Rays don't actually have their overcharge. So this would be, out of any time, the time to engage. But it looks like he's just going to keep trying to expand and stuff. Alright, these Void Rays getting separated. He could definitely pick those three off. But he doesn't. He's going to just try and take out every building before his opponent can. That's going to be really difficult for him, actually, just because of... Actually, there's not very many minerals. He couldn't rebuild a lot of buildings. If the Zerg... Okay, yeah, he's hiding drones right now. That's what he's working on right now. Uh, okay. There's a chance. Void Rays kill buildings super, super fast is the issue. Uh, Roaches and Muta is not the highest DPS units in the game, so... Alright, it's, what, 17 Void Rays, a Colossus, two Archons, and a Templar versus all of this in a base raid situation. As long as the Mutas can get over to these uh, four, three pylons, which are actually all right next to each other and will bounce between them, he may be able to win this game. Void Ray stopping the Melt that. Another Void Ray down here in the south taking that up. There's a decent amount of buildings up here. And now he's going to get revealed... Archon's making it up. These Void Rays need to run. They need to... I mean, sorry. Those Mutas need to run. They just need to book it out of there. Just run, Mutas. Just run. Stop trying to help out the Roaches. Let the Roaches do their job. You can always circle back. You are faster than Void Rays. Just run. Okay. He should see... Has he been... Has he been revealed yet? Yeah, he's been revealed. He sees where the remaining buildings are. I'm really surprised he's running back. Alright. So it's in a position that the Zerg can possibly win. He still has some income. I don't think he's going to ever get enough income. Wow, he says that hatchery with 24 HP left there at the end of it. Alright, so we have some drones moving over here. Roaches burrowing and unburrowing, just trying to be annoying. Are they going to reburrow? Yep, they do. There's no detection over here, so he has to stand here to defend this. And these mutas can go take out these up here. No mutas, don't waste your time on that void, Ray. Alright, there you go. Moving across, they're going to be able to take out these three pylons. And I mean, when you can't find an army head on. Alright, the Muta's working on this as fast as they can. They should be able to get it. The Roaches did pop up. And victory goes to XGS. And their player, Dark, in that base race situation, managed to take out all the buildings before the Void Rays could get around the map and take everything out. So the game does go to them. So now the series is 3-2. So XGS might be able to make a comeback. We'll have to see. Moving into game number six.